Hello everybody, it's SOD Medhaven here today, and we're going to be taking a look at the T-44-100, a Russian Tier 8 medium tank. Um, I was going to be releasing a review on this a few months back, but I found out, I would say, a couple of days prior, before the buff was actually dropped in the game, uh, that the tank was receiving a buff, so I actually scrapped that review that I was going to be putting out, and just, I, I didn't do it. <laughs> so we're doing this one a couple months down the road, and uh, yeah, let's go ahead and dive into some statistics here. So starting off, uh, let's take a look at penetration, uh, but before that, price, 7,800 gold. So if you're looking to actually pick this up, you're going to be looking at $37. Along with that, silver earn rate, 150%, so it's just a standard premium bonus. Uh, XP earn, 110 Nice free XP, 5%. That's an average for every single thing. Crew training, it's not a crew trainer. Plays up to tier 10. And a uh, little bit of problems inside tier 10 due to the penetration. So you're looking at 201 standard AP. Uh, you're looking at 247 uh, premium APCR. And then you're looking at 50 millimeters of high explosive with 250 for your standard and your premium. And 330 on your high explosive, 1,350 hit points. Uh, 52 top speed and 20 in reverse. 20 in reverse is really nice. Uh, with the power to weight with that as well, 15.52, it handles its top speed and its reverse speed very well. Uh, honestly, you do not need a power terrain for this tank. I do not find a need for that. Along with that, 380 view range, which does kind of hinder this tank just a little bit. It's not as bad as you may think. Um, with my crew loadout right now, I'm using optics, situational awareness, uh, born leader, and I'm looking at 486 and that is not using ventilation so even at 380 view range you still have a decent amount of view range uh detectability range which used to be percentage based i did prefer the percentage base because the higher the percentage the better off it was uh in the range of like 20 with them changing it it's kind of hard to be able to name off tanks and i can't remember what this thing's uh percentage was prior if it was like 0 0.22 0 0.2 or whatever it was but looking at this, 358 on the move. The moving uh, detectability has more value, in my opinion, than the still concealment. The still concealment, you know, you're, you're going to come to a stop. Your camouflage value is going to drop. If you're inside of a heavy tanks, they have a small benefit to still concealment, but not that much. So primarily this has a lot of value. If you want to run a camo build inside this tank, it does benefit from it. I am not 100% certain what it does drop down to. It's been a very long time since I've set it up. Uh, but whenever we do take a look inside the um, crews, I will show off both crews that I've used on this tank. And I might even pay to swap out one of the uh, pieces of equipment on the tank to be able to take a look at the still consumption, how far we can get it down if you guys are looking into getting that. So let's go ahead and take a look at the gun. Eight rounds per minute. You're looking at a base reload of 7.5 seconds. That's not too bad. Uh, module damage 135 across the board, so not too bad. Blast radius on the high explosives, 1.76 meters. Uh, honestly, the blast radius, I don't find much of a benefit of this on smaller guns compared to higher end guns. So if you want to splash near somebody, it, it's not going to be as beneficial. Uh, damage per minute, 2,000 base, and whenever you're using a gun rammer, and not ventilation, if you had ventilation on this, it'd be a different story. But with a gun rammer, a fully trained 9 perk crew, so primarily rapid loading. And uh, Born Leader, with those two perks, it should be fine. 2,743 damage per minute is what you jumped it up to. Uh, along with that, penetration of 500 meters, you're going to be looking at 181, 218. So pretty bad drop-off around 500 meters, but primarily you're going to be shooting people a bit closer. And if you are sniping inside this tank, keep that in mind. So max ammo speed, we're looking at 880 for your standards, 1,100 for your premium, and 880 on your... Uh, High explosives. Honestly, I I do feel a little bit of the um, gun handling. It likes to play against it a little bit, uh, but we'll get more into that here in a minute. So, uh, weapon range, yeah, 720. That's standard for World War II across the board. Uh, reload time, 7.5. Aim time, 2 seconds on a 100 millimeter. So this is a 100 millimeter. You can overmatch 30 millimeter plates and 35 millimeter plates. Uh, anything above 35, though, you're not going to be able to overmatch. Um, 56 rounds, uh, I, so far in the time I've been playing this tank, I have not ran into an issue of where I've ran out of ammunition or I'm having issues with loading or it's primarily no issues at all. Whatever it comes down to ammo capacity accuracy wise though at 0.35, um, you may think that the accuracy at 0.35 and the aim time at 0.2, well at, at two seconds is a, a decent amount. Um, in reality, 
there are hidden statistics on this that we don't have, except for we do have accuracy during turret rotation at 1.85. This is a massive hindrance on this tank, and it does play against it quite a bit. Also, at the very end of this, um, let me know if the um, if this is way too small for you guys in the video, because for me, looking at it from my point of view, it is pretty tiny. So let me know in the comment section down below if this is too tiny, and we will uh, upscale it later down the road. So, 7 degrees of gun depression, pretty nice to have. 23 of elevation, 180 across the board, fully ro rotatable turret. 7 degrees does not play against it in the slightest. Now, with the buff that was applied to this tank, originally, I can't remember what the thickness was on the frontal armor, but I do remember that the sides were 80 or 90 millimeters thick. Bumping it up to 130 has given this tank a massive advantage, and it just it's a game changer for the tank, and... The characteristics of the tank prior were uncomparable, and it's the entire reason why I waited to do the review until the buff was released, and then, you know, I kind of went through my whole spree of just, I'm done playing the game for a bit, which, technically, I'm coming back, I'm still having problems, though. There's a lot of things in games that do need to change, but we'll talk about that on another day. Uh, traverse speed on the uh, turret, you're looking at 48 degrees per second, and f at 48 degrees per second, it is highly responsive. Uh, so engine-wise, you're looking at 520 horsepower, 15.52, top speed of 52, we've already gone over this, fire chance of 15%. So far in the entire time I've played this tank, I've only been set on fire a total of three times, and once during my play session this morning, getting some recordings to be able to show off some gameplay inside this tank. So, that was kind of funny that it, that it happened to me. Along with that, uh, traverse speed on the tracks, we're looking at 51 degrees per second, and with some of the best terrain resistance in the game for a tank at 0 0.5, 0 0.6, and 1.5. Honestly, you do not need off-road driving on this tank. This is a tank I just... I don't see a point in tank ta hit, tanking it. Taking it. Uh, I do believe, however, that the crew that I'm using on this tank is using off-road driving, so more than likely I am benefiting from that. Signal range is 700 on the radio as well. Uh, 700 meters, that's not, not too bad. It does... That is primarily for assist and communicating to teammates that you have spotted to somebody. Uh, but radio range is primarily really good for assist damage. So, okay. Actually, let's go ahead and take a look at the armor model real fast. I uh, should have uh, probably set this up prior. And here we are back. So 130, 190 on the frontal turret armor. Uh, the hull armor itself, we're looking at 90 millimeters and 90 millimeters on the lower plate. Side armor, we're looking at 75 with 20 millimeters of uh, space protection. And your tracks in the way as well. The hatch on top, we're looking at 45 millimeters over on console, however. Let's take a look and see if the hatch matches the 45 that we see here. Yes, it does. On the top section, the low section is 100. There we go. Along with the back of the turret being 100 millimeters. It's not too bad. The rear armor itself, we're looking at 45. That's going to be nice. You can ricochet 120s if they uh, decide to shoot you in the rear. So you do have a chance to ricochet at the side. Uh, primarily, though, your upper armor right here, looking at 20 millimeters. This can't be overmatched by 90 millimeters, 75 millimeters. Top armor, 35 millimeters. So 105s, um, they're going to be able to penetrate this, especially your 100 millimeter. Uh, scratch that. Your 100 millimeter is going to bounce. Okay, I'm beating them up. At, I did not do the math. 35 yeah, times by three, it's going to exceed it. That's nice to see. So under armor, we're looking at 15 millimeters, overexposing. You're going to find that the issue. Nothing really too, uh, nothing stands out about it. Honestly, the turret armor itself, uh, 247 pin. You know, you're looking at 330 millimeters on the side here, which is really nice to see. Not just that, at the right angles, you're going to be auto ricocheting, which is going to be really effective against tier 10s. So let's actually compare this real fast against... Let's say a tier 10 opponent, the 121. This is going to be 258 standard, 262 standard pin, 340 heat pin. But we want to primarily take a look at the turrets here. So 300 millimeters. This was readjusting by uh, 5 degrees in impact as well. Against heat rounds, it's still going to be effective. 380 millimeters of armor. This is kind of like the benefit that was on this tank. And then if we're able to go back, let's say way far back in the update list here to 1.0. Ah, probably even farther back than 1.0. I'll uh, say 9.18. There we go. That was 100 millimeters originally. And it was extremely easy to uh, go through at the time because it was 280. Some areas around 150. A little bit of redesign. They removed this part on the tank uh, back in the day that was originally there. A couple of changes. So with the buff, um, 
heat rounds of higher tiers are no longer able to go through it. And uh, it's nice to see that console has readjusted that as well and removed that side piece there. That was a super weird piece. It was only in there for like a couple of months, I believe, near the um, first time when the tank first released. But the effective armor on the sides at 380 against a 340 heat pin against tier 10s does allow this thing to make up some performances, but the entire front of the turret, you're looking at quite a few problems. Uh, you do have a little bit of space protection on your gun mantle. Uh, but other than that, let's go ahead and dive into some gameplay. So first match, we're going to be taking a look at Ghost Town. Ghost Town was actually the last match that I played inside this tank uh, before I did a swap around and uh, had a couple of things to do. Also with audio, uh, there was a couple of issues with audio on the stream whenever we did the stream on Tuesday, if you guys caught that live or looked at the replay. OBS had an update on January 13th, and that update made it to where all capture cards audio were included. However, you did not have access to remove the audio. It was permanently engaged, no matter what you did. And, I mean, that's a little bit annoying, but it is what it is. And I wasn't able to catch it because I did nothing prior to try to catch it. So, let's go ahead and talk about the pros and cons of the T-44. The pros of this tank, the power to weight, allows you to move rapidly. You're capable of getting in and out of combat, moving around the map extremely fast, and... With the way the turret armor is put together, the side armor being 75mm, your frontal armor being 90mm, you got 45mm on the rear. It is an all-round, decently armored tank. It is capable of taking a hit, and with the side cheeks the way they are, it's all about moving forward and backwards in combat. The longer that you sit still, the more problems that you are going to be running into, allowing enemies to penetrate you because it's easier to aim at you. But moving, you know, doing a little bit of a wiggle is going to make it harder to hit you. Right here, not wiggling. He shot through the cheek of the front of the tank. And that's kind of expected. Now, the T-44-100, um, the pro-wise, it's kind of just the mobility and the armor that really stand out about this tank. Now, the cons to the tank is the penetration. However, due to the mobility, I don't find the penetration to be much of an issue because you're capable of relocating extremely fast, getting around the map, getting above enemies, utilizing that 7 degrees of gun depression to make this tank perform the way that you want it to perform. Now, ammunition-wise, of 56 rounds, um, as I said, I did not find myself having any problems, even with a 5.5 second reload. Uh, not a lot of issues there whenever it comes down to ammo consumption. I, it's probably going to last you an entire match unless you were in an extreme firefight and you were going through ammunition like crazy. That would be the only point that you find yourself really dispensing that out and just losing ammunition. Um, with 56 rounds though, you are capable of taking a healthy amount of premiums if you want to take a lot of premiums. Uh, primarily for me, during the time that I was 3 marking this tank, um, I ended up against two artilleries that I was pretty much the only person that was able to shoot them. And you know how it goes. Kill the artillery. And with the most recent re we <laughs> rework that they did to artillery, artillery now have a lot of hit points. So I kind of feel like the three mark that I got in this was not legitimate. Uh, because it was like 2,400 hit points worth of additional grinding. And that match I did 5,000 damage, but 2,400 of it kind of felt a bit lackluster because it was against artillery, it didn't feel like I didn't have that satisfaction of a 3 mark because of the artillery that I shot. And that's kind of how it went. Now, um, jumping into the tank and playing it, I have noticed, like, in the times that I have spent inside this tank, that you need to spend a little bit more time aiming because of that turret rotation. Whenever your bloom is really far out, that 0.35 dispersion value, even though with the crew inside of it and with vertical stabilizers that I'm using, I'm looking at 0.28 accuracy, I'm still finding a lot of problem. Uh, a lot of problems whenever it comes down, because you got 2.36 um, accuracy during movement, along with that, the aim time being down to 1.84. Aim time is not a... It's decent aim time, but it's not the greatest aim time. And I kind of find that at medium range, you really need to take the time to take those shots. Because if you're not, you're going to find your shells really just going left, going right, going high, going low. If you don't take the time to take these shots, they will miss. And that's kind of how it feels. Um, the gun is a little bit wonky, but primarily it's a decent weapon. Now, against the higher tiers, your penetration 
is going to be one of the biggest hindrance. I find this tank is best suited for its own tier combat. So against tier 9s, it's going to perform decent. Against tier 8s, that's kind of going to be the best place to have this tank. Because against tier 8s, you know, it's, that's kind of where it was made to handle. But even against tier 10s, if you're able to use your armor and actually make it work, it does perform decently if you know a lot of the weak spots. Or if you know some of the cheesy places to penetrate some of the tier 10s in the game, then that can really help this tank uh, stand out in the crowd. Con-wise, though, you know, there's not a whole lot. Honestly, this is kind of one of those tanks that it's an all-rounder. It's a jack-of-all-trades, but a master of none. Uh, honestly, it is a super unicum tank. This is a tank that a lot of super unis use to grind W and 8, or it actually has a really high skill cap compared to most on this on most of the tanks that I actually review. Um, I find the T44 for myself to be this really comfortable playstyle. It's not overly aggressive, and it's not you know it, it, it's not a tank meant to sit in the back of the map and snipe. It's something that likes to get in and use its armor to kind of brawl just a little bit, but not heavy brawling. It really likes to be in the front line and support the team, um, offer up that view range, use your mobility to kind of push out a little bit. It's something that, depending on the equipment that you take, it is a universal tank, and you can pretty much do anything that you want inside of this tank. But with the flaws that it has penetration-wise, and then the armor not being the strongest, but not being the weakest, it is a decent performer. Um, I don't really know anything else to go over inside the tank, except for... It's decent. I also have one more replay. I kind of feel like there's no point to play the replay, but we're going to play it because we have it. And 94.76. A couple of the matches this morning were not exactly the greatest, but it was okay. Second replay, we're going to be looking at Canis, and we're going to be top tier once again. Um, I do have a recording that uh, I was against tier 10s, uh, but I kind of got nuked. Yes, nuked by artillery for about 900 damage. And uh, yeah, essentially got taken out of the game extremely early, but I had a cheesy shot against somebody, and I dropped him through the ice over in uh, Arctic region as they were trying to be aggressive. I got no damage or assist from it, but it was kind of funny. Uh, that's all it is, though. Um, yeah, I don't know anything else to really talk about for this tank. I, I find it to be... It's a decent performer. It's not for beginners, however. I would avoid this if you're, you know, freshly starting off in the game. Just because this tank, its skill cap is a little bit higher. And you will find yourself kind of disliking this tank if you were to go after it. Primarily, I would actually recommend the T-54 prototype if you're looking to get something similar to this that it actually has a bit more armor and has kind of a similar playstyle but less power to weight and a lower top speed. Um, so yeah, the T-54 prototype would uh, be recommended. I do not have a review on that tank, however. So uh, just think of it as essentially the same gun handling, maybe a little bit on the worst side of the gun handling, but all around, it's going to end up the same. So, Canis, this map, uh, not a lot to really talk about. Um, kind of wish that uh, during the time that I was playing this tank this morning and yesterday that I would have saw Arctic Region on it. Well, not Arctic Region, but uh, Airfield, because uh, I really want to see Airfield. Honestly, I'm just waiting for them to remove Sunset Coast from the game because that map is just not balanced, and it was just a bad take. It, it was a decent attempt, a good try, but a bad tank. Bad take. I'm saying tank a lot. Uh, too bad I don't see any 69s on the list inside the mod review we're looking at the T44 because I would be able to sit here and be like, nice. Uh, but I see 63. Ah, sad face. Just a little bit. They should buff the ammo. 69 rounds, come on. Make this a true super uni tank. The LTB, I actually probably, um, I could have shot a high explosive at the building and knocked it down, but I did not. This match is actually a decently long one, actually. This one goes on, it's a seven minute round, so not too bad. A decent amount of time. Matchmaking itself, um, I gotta say, taking the uh, break that I did and then coming back, uh, it was nice. Definitely nice. Um, it gave me a different point of view on the game and development standpoint and understanding that Honestly, ranked gameplay is not the way to go. 
Um, if there's anything that they really need to do, it's kind of going to be working into the matchmaking and making it new. Taking what they already have and bringing it up to par. Along with that, uh, there's a couple of things I want to talk about, but more than likely I'll be doing it uh, on Tuesday on a live stream. And more than likely I will link that live stream down in the description of this review. That way you guys can have access to it if you want to look into it to uh, what we were talking about. Primarily, it's going to be talking about reloads on tanks and a couple of other things. Uh, just something to cover during the time. Talking about the updates that are going to be going on every single Tuesday. That is the plan. By the way, every single Tuesday, I do want to jump on and do live streams covering the updates that are coming into the game and uh, talking about changes that they're going to be adding in and just a little bit of a different focus and uh, possibly getting a couple of the people to team up with me on content creation for the game. And then all doing the same thing on the same channel. That way you guys have uh, multiple upload periods from um, probably two different people, two additional different people on the channel. And it's all going to be essentially... Yeah, you know, we're going to have it monetized, leave it the way it is. Uh, Alright, enough of that, because now we're just monologuing. That's a good snapshot. IS-3 going to be pulling over, and this is with 201 penetration, 264, decent high roll. Uh, so far up to 570 block. That T-54 uh, prototype that was off in the distance back there, I was uncomfortable because to go up against that 201 center penetration is definitely not enough. Uh, right here, I kind of feel like I sat there way too long because I do get unspotted. There it is. I was still spotted, and uh, that shot was not fun. I actually... <laughs> I remember looking down and thinking to myself, I'm not spotted, and I was looking around and realized he actually pinned the side of the tank because I was overexposed a little bit too much and he took the time to find the shell. So far up to 2,000 damage dealt, 960 blocks, 614 assisted, TVP being aggressive, throwing out some shots. I do remember asking Blade if he has some sh shots in this guy, and he missed. It's actually kind of funny hearing him say that. But with the 880 shell velocity, you will find that you do need to lead targets quite a bit. Uh, and then the APCR is definitely nice to have as well. Speaking of which, the APCR, I would love to see price tags on those whenever we're looking over the statistics. Uh, 252 for the standard and the high explosive, and 4,400 on the um, APCR premium round. So, that's a pricey premium round, especially since you're going to be reload reloading every single 5.5 seconds with the same loadout that I am using, or 5.1 seconds with um, your active rations. Yeah, a bit pricey to play. But if you're using the standard rounds and you want to make silver, it's a decent silver maker because those standard rounds are definitely cheap at 252. Or 258. What was it again? Oh my gosh. 252. Okay, I was right the first time. Second guessing myself immediately. Really slow match though. I mean, not super slow, but slow to a point that kind of sat in the middle the entire time. But not bad. This is kind of give you an idea, like, the general performance, and then here's some of the weapon accuracy right there. We're aiming at the rear, but because we're not fully aimed in, the shell went so far off that it went straight to the right and hit the track instead. And that's one of the moments that I probably could reference and mention. And then right here, the STG. I do not know if I get any shots in the STG. Maybe I do. Maybe he gets aggressive. Oh, no, the Diamondback. That's right. That's right. So, Diamondback, um, he does get me. I'm going to spoil it early. Uh, I did hesitate on taking that final shot, and you will see what I'm talking about here in a minute. But I do come over, and my goal was, let's see if we can perma-track him. There's one. I see that he, he popped his repair kit, and I, I should have really backed up and kind of see if he was going to be using a repair kit. But instead, I sat in the open, and he put a shell into me, which was kind of like, uh-oh, that's not fun. Oh, that's not good. Track the left track, make him rotate to the right to keep his gun as far away from me as possible. This STG, it would have been good if he focused me, but he did not. He proceeded to go straight after my teammate right there, which allowed me to essentially, I'm going to be farming his hit points, setting him on fire. Oh, that's too bad. Sorry, STG. But, you know, it's, it's a cooking party. It's a barbecue out here. And right here is the play I made. I had so many opportunities to kill this guy. I aim in, and I just, I, I became a Muppet. My brain went from fully operational to completely brain dead in like two seconds. And 
Yeah, that is what it is. Just completely gone. 169,000. Nice. There we go. There's the six that I was talking about. Um, along with that, yeah. Decent tank. 5,700 combined that match. That's a good match. And uh, welcome back. Here, here's my beautiful face and my monologue voice. A lot of it. I need to start writing out scripts. I have this entire section right here on my PC that I can literally have a script right here now. And I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna utilize this, and I'm gonna make sure that my content that I'm gonna be producing from now on is gonna be a lot more, uh, less monologue. Yeah, probably not. All right, so let's go ahead and jump inside the crew real fast. I'm gonna be showing you guys both crews and probably uh, tearing apart. Uh, some crews, at, well not tearing apart, but switching out some equipment real fast to show off the um, camouflage bonuses. But starting off, we're looking at Born Leader, Rapid Loading, Steady Aim, Snapshot, Off-Road Driving, useless perk in my opinion on this tank, but I have it on this. However, if you were going to trade this out, I would recommend to go with Rapid Aim and increase that gun turret rotation. Or, Silent Driving, if you wanted to use the same loadout. Primarily, if you want to use this loadout, the ones that you can trade out would be Clutch Braking and Off-Road Driving for Silent Driving and camouflage expertise if you want to copy my build for the tank. Uh, along with that, let's go ahead and swap out, let's say, gun stabilizer, which I actually would not recommend. So let's actually do the, um, let's do the advanced loader and swap this out for advanced statistics here. Let's go, ahead and go there. Uh, let's jump into commanders real quick. We're going to jump right here real fast. Vehicle assignment. We're going to make this go medium. There we go. And with a camo build, we're looking at 264 meters. That is not too bad. Um, from 317, though, I mean, yeah, 275 um, for your moving. They should, rather than still consume it, that should actually rotate out. That would be nice. So 317 still, 264 still, 275 moving. Uh, it's decent that it would allow you to make some decent plays. Along with that, doing this, your reload jumps from uh, 5.5 seconds to 6.08 seconds. So 6.1 rounded off. Uh, jumping from 2,700 to be into 2,468. That's not too bad, though. You're you're going to be at having an advantage of staying concealed, but primarily I would say stick it with the gun rammer and just go crazy with that. Uh, let's take a look at this commander as well, if you guys want to use this uh, camo crew. A born leader, rapid loading, camouflage expertise, silent driving, situational awareness, six cents, muffled shot. Honestly, I don't think a muffled shot in this tank would be beneficial due to the fact that it is a 100mm track mechanic and steady aim. And that would be about it. Well, you guys, uh, this was a fun, I don't know how long we've been here. Uh, but it, it's been a fun uh, 28 minutes. Oh my goodness, I am sorry about that. Oh well, it's decent. At least I'm back making content and feeling a lot better about it. Um, other than that, you guys, it was nice having you here. Hope you enjoyed the content. Leave a like, comment, subscribe. Seriously, leave a comment. Let me know what you think about the size of this. If it's too small for you guys, I will bump it up. Speaking of which, let's actually go ahead and try this real quick. Uh, display settings, let's actually hit this up to... Let's say, scratch that, that is the wrong monitor. Being a Muppet, monitor number two, ultra wide, gotta love it. Uh, bump it up to 175, oh my goodness. And does this look better? Would you prefer 175 during reviews or the 125, which I swear was super tiny. Actually, the entire freaking screen got huge. Yeah, there you go. That's one. That's one seventy-five. That's gigantic. On my end, that's gigantic. <laughs> On your end, it probably looks good. Other than that, you guys, thanks for being here. Catch you later.